The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, noon until 1 p.m. Eastern Time. 877-927-6648 is the number to call. Let's just go through the, the uh, prologue first. We've got the Dow up 28. Now, let me explain what I'm looking at here. Uh, within the context of the double top, 27,398 on the 16th of July, goes sharply down to 25,339 low on the 15th, a month later. And then a month later, on the 12th of September, it makes a high of 27,308, 306. What do we always look for in the Chapman Wave methodology? <clears throat> I'm not sure I've even got this up here. No, I don't. <laughs> I'll get it. We're always looking for at least that fourth highest peak, and that's where other things can happen. Just keep it as simple as you can. <clears throat> as we're looking at this, the Dow went under the 14-period moving average for the first time. <clears throat> since it broke out above, and that was on the uh, 4th of September. <clears throat> so let me just go straight into the technical analysis. I was discussing back in April of 2019 at the top when we went short a day before the high, all-time high, and then again at the all-time high of the, 20, of the 16th of July, 27th, 398, where we shorted seven or seven points from the top, um, I discussed this particular pattern here. <clears throat> you can use whatever techniques you you feel comfortable with, obviously, but just be consistent. That's what I say. People say, "Give me, you use a nine bleed exponential." You, I don't care what you use. Just make sure that it's the one that works for you more, many times more often than it doesn't. And the other thing is. Be consistent. Don't change it because somebody said a nine EMA is better than your seven SMA or DMA or whatever it is. Don't suddenly change it. What I do when I get that, and you've seen it before, <clears throat> someone had once said to me, 32 period moving average. So I put a 32 period moving average, never even discussed it, put it on, never discussed it for months. And then one day I said, you know what? <clears throat> I've just used it for long enough. It, it, it doesn't do what my particular indicators do, so it's out, it's gone. And that's it, so I didn't change anything. I just used it, I checked it out. Okay, so that's just a word of advice. More important, if you're looking at this particular chart, uh, I've kept in the, the sell signal and the buy signal. We missed this particular buy signal uh, right here uh, because it made the H pattern that I always talk about. The H goes to a lowercase H, another, another arch formation going from a lowercase H to a lowercase M. And the big deal is that if it breaks the upside decisively, it usually doesn't look back because it goes towards the next highest peak. In this case, is the peak all the way back here in the Dow on the July the uh, 31st. We hit 27,281. That was the that was the day that it also turned around and started a tremendous downward movement. So I said this is a process. Then I use other signals. I use Chapman Wave methodology to to get my actual signals. But within that context, I like confirming. Uh, we can use them in this particular case, confirming moving averages could be confirming anything. I like confirming technicals. And what I'd said is that this whole process of getting the green line, because it's going above the black line, therefore changes to green. It's pink when it goes underneath. And I made it pink because red, there's just too many red bars. Yeah, I don't want to have this, I have a big confusion. I had said that I got the sell signal back in, eight, back in April, but it took about seven bars or even eight bars before the MACD actually crossed this, the slow moving average. That is the nine period at moving average. The green line went under the black. Black's always constant. It's the green and pink that changes when it crosses over or under the 14 period moving average. So if I didn't have the signal and I waited, for the confirmation, look, that's a green candle right there. It was right here that I got it. And would be, I would have missed a ton of the move 
I still would have got a nice chunk, but that, a ton. But it would have been terrible if I waited for the next crossover because, look, right here's the crossover. So the signal comes in, and all I have is about uh, 130 Dow points instead of that big move down. So this is just a confirming signal. But what I have said is that until I start to see that nine period, the green nine period moving average cross decisively below the 14 period moving average, we might see the same seven, eight, nine bars going sideways with slightly lower highs and slightly lower lows that we saw before. The only difference is that that move down today makes this a little bit more. If you're looking at the chart pattern, it resembles more the one from April than it was than it does the one from uh, the, the exact high of July the 16th, right there. Little tiny doji candle. And what do we have here? We have little doji candles. Always warnings to me to be on the lookout for a potential uh, way station on the way up, because if it breaks to the, to the direction that it's come from after the little tiny doji candle, it means that moment of indecision has been followed by a moment of decision, and you can get a one-to-one -one move to the upside based on the, uh, look at this, from this little candle here, if you go from here to there, and then on the way up, I don't always look at it as a one-to-one, -one, but it's a big move to the upside, all right? And now on the on the downside, you had the reversal candle, you had this small, but still kind of a long-legged doji candle on the, right there, on the 12th of um, August. Uh, the following day, we wanted to short it. We just missed shorting. And then I had to wait. I had to wait. And I missed this one here. I was ready for it. I didn't anticipate that on the 19th, uh, you would have such a big move to the upside and then turn down. I expected a bounce, but it went higher than I wanted. So on Friday, we were lucky. We got just about almost the same price, within 20 points of it. And we, we are now technically on the short side for the Dow. We still have only a long positions in terms of stocks because they've done so well. I just want to keep holding them, even though one of them is a little bit more vulnerable than the others at this particular moment because it's a cyclical stock. We'll see. But look what happened. Today you went down. You finally said 26, 26,827 is the 14 period exponential moving average. And what was the low today? Uh, 26,831. It went to within four points of that level. In the 120 minute chart, here's my 120 minute chart that I show my. If you're interested in the market in terms of knowing what's going on technically, being able to follow it so that you have parameters that you're looking at, uh, patterns that you can follow, that's what I do every day for my subscribers. Uh, even on the weekend, I'm sending out charts. Why? Because I want this to be a learning process. I want you to be able to say, hey, I have a technique, and now Basil's got to introduce me to a couple of other things. I'm going to not change my technique. I'm going to rather utilize what he's given me as an additive to what I'm doing. I'll test it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work for me. If it does work, it's great. I've got now something extra. So I do all this analysis. You know, I always say at the end of the day, even before the end of the day, Friday, even before the end of the day, Friday, you remember I said I've got a Chapman Wave trend gauge reading, a very low reading. There should be, no matter what happens, there should be weakness at some point in the Dow before it attempts a rally on Monday morning. It should go negative. Then lo and behold, last night, I'm looking up 120, 130 points in the Dow futures. The s and is up 15. And I thought, oh, man, is this going to be one of those rare days that it fails? And it's failed once or twice where the market was up 350 points and then came down to a plus 65, to a plus 65 and then closed up a little bit. And that, that's a failure because it didn't go negative. But look what it did. So today we got that. We went down and now we're trying to rally. I'll be right back. Huh? If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk.
risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Bowser Jaffin. So let's just continue with this because the beginning of the week and we got, you know, getting to wrap up uh, for September. So this is going to be an important week. So we're now right in between the nine period moving average and the black line, that's the green, and the black line is the 14 period moving average 26,828 and resistance at 26,960. The high today so far is 26,969. So this is what I'm looking at. There's a process going on. And if the nine period moving average is going to go below, and I always look at this, let me just for one second go here to the daily. I always look at this and I say, if there is a peak D underneath the previous high, unless we're in a brand new buy mode from a very uh, um, way oversold low, in other words, you've already come down and started what could potentially be a major bottom, where obviously you're going to get a peak D four higher peaks, and if it keeps, if the tide keeps going up, you're going to recycle and get another four four higher peaks. But when you're coming off the top, and you can't get back above that at a peak D, in other words, twenty seven thousand three ninety eight July, twenty seven thousand three hundred and sixty. Yep, it's only ninety uh, two points, but it couldn't break above it, and then it fell sharper to a trough B. We're in a leg B. I'm sorry, leg B right now to the downside. That's showing some kind of at least consolidation weakness. All right. So now let's go back to our story. And we're looking at this and I'm saying, fine. Does it have to go negative? No, this could make an M-shaped pattern and just continue. Look, we've seen that before, an M-shaped pattern and recycle. We saw a little tiny M-shaped pattern over there. But unless it makes a new recovery high, at least very sharply above 27,906, Probably even has to go above the 27,000, um, right here, the 27,398, where is that? Right there, 98 high. This is, this is something to take uh, seriously, all right? Let me show you something else. <clears throat> Within the context of the weekly chart, that rally into that July high, 
in the Dow and look at the M-shaped pattern in the MACD. Now it's a failing pattern, even though it's positive, it is just struggling to maintain the positive aspect. And the stochastic has made lower low, lower highs on each recovery high. So it just says to me, sideways move, be careful. I don't yet have a signal. I think I might be getting one by Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning to say that this could be a deeper correction. But there are three things. Remember, if there's no dark news cover, in other words, there's just no bad news out there that's really okay, not just a one tweet uh, sudden pop up or decline. It needs to be something that gets followed up and followed up for days. I don't see anything on the horizon right at this moment to say that there's a dark cloud cover that is ominous. I see just a sideways cap on the market. I do see some base levels that are holding. We'll see what happens. Okay. The other thing is the VIX index, this volatility index, VIX.X, the volatility can't put it in the wrong place. Let's put it over here. The volatility index, VIX.X, is trading at 15.04. It's in the lower range, but it is in the teens. That says to me, that's a good reason to think that there's a cap on the, on the upside, because I can tell you this, if at any point the VIX index drops into the 13.20, 12.80 level, you won't just have buying support. You'll probably have a pretty powerful move to the upside in the Dow. So if the VIX starts to trade in the 1650s to the 1690s between now and tomorrow, I suspect that we will start to see another pullback in the market. It's going to be a process. So that's so news is one, volatility is two. And if you look at the TLT, remember I like to look at I look I like to look at a smorgasbord of indicators. The TLT is rallying it's up 57 right now, bonds. But 148.90 was the high on the 28th of August. 156.54 on the 13th of uh, September was the low. This so far I'm going to treat as a, a bounce. Now, where does it change from being a bounce to a break to the upside? I would say 145.80, 146.30 and closing there, making 145.10 a support for about a day or two and then moving higher, I'd say, oh, be careful. We want to retest the highs. But if this is going to be an inverted V-shaped uh, um, pullback, then maybe we will see yields rally as bonds decline and the TLT slips underneath 139. It's a 142.44 or 55 right now. If it goes under 139.20, uh, let's just say under one, closes under 139, I'd have to look at this and say, okay, now's the time to see, is money going to flow out now of the safety of bonds and back into stocks? And will stocks rally to uh, a new all-time high? That's going to be the question. It's a question right now. We've got our position. Uh, it's only one position. It's not like, like I have a whole slew of short positions. I could have. There were some that I liked on the short side. I just decided to be focused right now on letting the the – the positions that we have in stocks that I think are in this particular cycle have done well. Some we've had since December or even February or March, and we're still holding or we've been in and out. But these are the positions that we like. I don't yet see a big change in them. And until they change, I'm not going to change. So let's just put it that way. Now, a couple of questions came up. Um, where's my – let me just see if I can get to my emails here. I've had a – Little change of things, yeah. Quick, uh, quick, 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 quick. Uh, yes. So, okay. So I don't think I'm getting my TFN emails. I'm sorry to say, I, I have to re. I'd have to re-implement that in, in a different program here. So I'm sorry about that. But I do have some questions about. Um, okay. Number one question I got over the weekend is, <clears throat> in terms of what you're looking at. You had spoken about Cintas before, C-T-A-S. Where is it now and what is it doing? My, uh, my thinking earlier was that Cintas was giving me a signal, especially based on the weekly peak F. It could alternate and be an F slash B, but I think right now it really looks like an F. That Cintas is telling me that we've got to be somewhat careful and that there are areas, pockets within the economy 
that are starting to see slowdowns. Like, let's go to Marriott. Look at this. Marriott has that same pattern, inverted V-shaped pattern, pulling back off the all-time high of 149 in January of 2018, slumps down to the 109s in December. I think that was November, actually. And then rallies all the way back, and it goes to 144, pulls back to 124, bounces to 135s, and now is trading at, what is that? That shouldn't be there. Uh, let me just, is that, a, is that a, oh, that's a key. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a price. I thought it was an up arrow. I thought, what's an up arrow doing there? Yeah, so it's trading at 126 right now. And that's saying to me, if you look at this kind of a head and shoulders pattern in the weekly chart, it says, be a little careful because some of these um, resorts and hotels are seeing a slowdown. And I was speaking to someone uh, from TripAdvisor yesterday, um, kind of a, uh, um, a block party. And it lives in a house just a, a few houses away. And uh, I said to him, you know, is this a, 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 a stock like a trip advisor give anything on the economy? I'll tell you what he said when we get back. I'll be right back. That's a Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's up 28, S&P's up 3. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So I was looking at uh, over the weekend, just going through a couple of the investment business daily stocks, and I had a whole bunch there. Um, I don't know. I, I've had electronic uh, IBD for, I don't know, for forever. And um, 
I still like the newspaper. I don't get all that information. I can't even find some of it. It's just, you know, you get to a certain age, I guess, and you, you aren't quite as well equipped, equipped as the youth of today. But, um, geez, so they had some very interesting uh, stocks there and I, IPOs, and I looked at most of them, and most of them had done very poorly. So anyway, so here I am. I'm chatting to um, uh, this person um, has something to do with TripAdvisor. And I, I said to him, so um, does TripAdvisor in any way, is that some kind of an indicator of economic strength? I kind of knew the answer because if you look at TripAdvisor, look at the chart, it's in its own world. I guess it's, this is part of the business that has its ups and downs. And it, well, TripAdvisor, TRIP, was once upon a time back in November of last year at 69, round number high. And then it comes down a little bit and goes to the most recent low of uh, 35.41 on the 27th, bounces to 42, 43, and today's trading at 38. So, um, and then he mentions, uh, so I also realized that they were part of Expedia. So I look at Expedia chart now. Uh, we're looking at a high way back in 2018 at 160, drops a little bit down to 99, rallies quite sharply to 144, and it too is now down. It's, it's kind of struggling. So his answer was very interesting because. Um, I like I like to use something like a syntax to me uniforms and, and uh, something that has a direct correlation to the buying of of either equipment or um, in this case uniforms and outfits and some kind of something that's directly related to certain industries like uh, hotel industry anything to do with uh, uniforms and that's always been a great indicator. So the answer was that no, he said, it, there's just a very peripheral uh, relationship. This has to do more with demand, how much spending we're doing on advertising, and that sort of thing. And I, I actually was thrilled that I got that answer because it's an answer that makes sense in the stock market. In the stock market, you want to relate relative to relative, oranges to oranges, to try to get a relationship. If you're getting oranges to mandarins, yeah, there's a color recognition of the orange, but they're kind of different. So, um, but I thought it was very interesting because I tried to put the two together. What was it? It's CLB, is that CLB? Uh, what are the cruise lines? CL, oh, I'm forgetting them, CLB maybe. Nice, right, someone can help me. Oh, cruise lines. That's a C R L. Oh, Charles River Labs. Whoops, that's another one that I always keep my eye on. Oh man, I'm just forgetting. I usually know these things so well. Uh, what is it called? Carnival Cruise. C C L. There it is. C C L. Um, this is different, in a way, because it made us high back in 2018, and it's come down to lower lows and lower low highs, lower lows and lower highs. So that, to me, I wouldn't have asked the question there because that is a very special kind of clientele. But I thought it was very interesting because I keep talking about the rotational aspect of this market. And there have been times where you've seen uh, thing, uh, stocks like a Carnival Cruise moving up with the market and you get something like a Syntas moving up with the market and you get some area like an Expedia or, or a TripAdvisor moving up and you think, oh, well, everything looks great. And all of a sudden you get the divergence. That's a bigger divergence than if you're looking at something real, which is like the IYT also having made a high uh, much earlier back in September, 209.44 on the IYT. The uh, iShares transportation index plummets down to 155, rallies up to the 200 area, slumps down to the 175 area. <clears throat> Just the other day, it hit 199.23, and now it's come down. And yet, when you look at it on a monthly basis, all that's happening is you're creating a wedge formation. Uh, so far, lower highs and higher lows, and you're trying to and you're trying to work towards the apex. But if you are looking at this in terms of giving information, 
it goes directly to the issue that I've spoken about and I've said, this is a rotational market. We've seen rotational corrections on the way up. I'm not sure how I can even explain that. What it means is, as we're rallying to new highs, there are some sectors that had led that are fading to lead, like the FANG stocks, and yet the markets, the, the key indices still go to new highs. So therefore, there's a correction, but it's on the way up, and you can get corrections on the way down. And I love the ones on the way down. Why? Because only in December of this year, and I think it was in August, September, October of 2015, did we get really deep corrections where you, you kind of saw 93% or perhaps more of all the stocks go down. All the other ones have seen rotational corrections, and those rotational corrections have essentially said, hey, wait a minute, um, I'm looking good. Why is everybody else going down? Or, uh, geez, I don't know why, why I'm, I'm slumping like this. You know, some of the other stocks are moving up, even in the same sector. So that's why I'm saying right now, I'm looking at this as more a correctional, rotational, um, digestive phase. And that's what I wanted to do. Ooh, that was a very long way of saying the digestive phase. Okay. <laughs> so in the meantime, back at the ranch, a question about Norwegian cruise lines. I don't remember what the symbol is for that. I don't think it's else in NCL, in CL, uh, uh, Norwegian cruise lines. No, that's go. Uh, just CL is Colgate Pomolo. That's not what I was looking at. It is a digestive phase. Um, yeah, Norwegian cruise doing better. Yeah, it has to do with competition. That's this whole thing this guy was trying to emphasize, uh, and some other people made the same comments, that it was really um, how their sales programs are received and the outcomes thereof. It, it kind of part of the market, but not directly market-related. All right, so that I needed to get that out of the way. Uh, a couple of questions that, yes, Boeing, I'll have a look at Boeing. Boeing is... Uh, down a dollar twelve at three seventy eight twenty seven made a peak D I confirmed on Friday pulling back this is looking let me just do this now because I a couple of questions I can see have come in so okay let me explain look the Dow I N D U the Dow has made a peak D made a little double top pull back. MACD is still quite strong, but it hasn't crossed negative, but it is turning down. Stochastic's now only at 81. It was at 96% the just the five, seven sessions ago. Now it's at 81. It's about to de decline under the 80% if there's a turn down by the end of the day. So we've got to be careful. But so far, the technicals are saying, hey, it's holding well. And remember the 9 and 14 period moving average? Holding very nicely. Okay, that's that says that the weekly chart says yes, it's a double top. You can make a little cup and a handle formation, but the MACD is just barely positive, and the stochastics at 80%. So this is not showing the kind of strength you saw earlier on. The weekly, the monthly chart hasn't yet crossed positive in the MACD, but it's still price-wise, still looking very good. Um, question I had about GDX. Can I just do the GDX? Yes, GDX. Um, pulling back a little bit from the earlier gain. I'll do that when we get back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 32. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, just asking my uh, producer if there are any calls because I've had to switch to another system, so I'm not getting his uh, Slack IMs. So it has to go through the den. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're looking at... Um, I, I said that I would do. Um, what was the, what was the question? I had so many interruptions there that I think I lost my oh, gold. The GDX, GDX. Right now is the gold miners trading at twenty eight eighty nine up twenty cents. Now let me. Couple of things. The move that went to thirty point ninety six on the fourth of September was against a declining technical background. You remember, I like to treat the technicals as either confirmation or you have to have a way of analyzing that could exclude a falling MACD, falling stochastic, falling relative strength of RSI, a falling I, uh, OBV on balance volume in the, in the daily here. And yet the price moved up. And that's the magnificence of this one particular technique that I developed. I had a webinar on um, a couple of months ago. And um, it allows you to look at a chart and independently discuss it in terms of not having crossed negative. And in this particular instance, it is now finally crossed negative. And... Um, it's going to take about another two sessions of moving above the 20, I'd probably say 29 level, to go back to being positive. And then the MACD, which has had a huge, sharp reversal and is within 0.02 of the histogram crossing positive, will give a sign that's good. And the stochastic at 37% has come all the way back from the single, I remember saying it's in the five, six percent area. Uh, let me just double check that. It went down to 4%, 4%, 4.2% uh, back on the 21st, I think it was, of, of September. And now what it is, is it's trading very nice. So that must have been, uh, no, let me give you the exact date. <laughs> Excuse me, it's that meantime sneeze on the 13th of September, and, uh, and now it's in leg B. But the way the pattern's unfolding, it's going to have to be some bad news event that favors gold for it to really break into the 31s. Personally, I would like to see a right shoulder fade here. 
here i'd like to see it come back and test the 26 as it's done it once i'd like to see it do it one more time maybe even break that low and at that point there'll be a tremendous amount of information because you'll have bonds if bonds keep going in the same direction then the yields so now let me just show you this the tlt look here's the tlt same pattern so that would say instead of going to 144.80, 153.30, somewhere in that area, in the TLT over the next two days, and holding there, it can't just pop and then fail miserably. It's got to hold there. The GDX, the gold miners, and the TLT have been in in sync. So look, 828 was the high at 148.90. The GDX made its high on the fourth at 30.96 made the low on the so they matching and i think that we're looking now this is the whole thing about the market because if they're going to scream louder in other words if bonds through the tlt is going to start pushing into the 146s or higher i i think that will impact the market because the market should see money come out of the yields uh, out of the uh, stocks and into the yields for safety so-called safety i always say so-called safety you never know okay so it's kind of a very, this is a complex moment i'm trying to make it as simple as possible we've looked at short-term tops in the key industry so gold the gdx um the fans this is let me do this so this is the 4th of september indu on the 12th of september the dow made its high on the spx.x on the same day i think it was yeah on the 12th the s p made its high of 30 20.72 underneath the 30 20.78 30.27.98 high of, of april april 26 i think uh, july 26 yep july 26 so this is why i'm saying consider that this is kind of a sideways action going on right now that we did go to a lower low in the Dow today, which is important. That makes leg B. We haven't yet gone to a leg B to the downside in the S&P. That would have to take out this particular low of the, the 18th of 2978.57. So I'm not, I don't want to make this complex. This is nothing complex here. We've got a signal that says the best risk reward opportunity just on the shorter term was to go to the short side. If it's wrong, it's wrong. On the long side, we've got our one, two, uh, three, four, five long positions that we're still holding long. Have done nothing about it other than to take a little bit of profit. Uh, well, five, six. Uh, um, pro little profit uh, in one of them. Did, just did exactly what we wanted over a few days span. It was a short-term trade. Wanted leg D. It made the leg D. Now it's at peak D. So you've got to, you've got to manage that trade. So... I haven't yet got to the position where I want to start shorting deeper. I do see specific stocks that I think I've been, I've talked, spoke about this ages ago. I said, if you look at um, alphabet wise, what was it? Ooh, oh, Visa. It was a V. It was V. That I was getting a double top signal. I think that Visa was, uh, I had an alternate count. And that I thought there was a chance that it could go a little higher from the 180, uh, 184 high that was made earlier in, in July and had a big run up, but then it could turn down and become vulnerable uh, to the whole yield thing. And yep, it did. But I, I, we didn't go short. It just, it was, I, you know, if you didn't get this exact move right here, you kind of missed it. And look what happened. Boom. It, it went higher than any short position on uh, in the July time frame. So yeah, this is a this is a, tr a tricky time to be shorting. Not only that, it's a tricky time. I I wanted to buy the DZZ for subscribers, the DZZ back on the uh, beginning of September. I think it was right here. Uh, yeah, the very first day of the trading uh, nine four. I thought, hey, great, let's buy the D. And then I thought, wait a minute, overnight, anything could be said, any tweet, and I'm vulnerable to an overnight in a two times short gold? Why would I want to even think of that? No, I think gold is in a situation here where I need to see how it handles the next two weeks. I need to see how it handles either on the upside, a break, a close above 30.20, even higher than I was talking earlier on, two and a half points higher on the GDX, or... A two and a half point pullback here, going to the 26s. 
And then I think we're going to get a much better sense of the rest of 2019 in this area. So I'm just saying, be careful. Uh, the DAX, okay, if you want to do the DAX, I have to do it through the DEDOW. This is the uh, Dow Jones. See, this is, this is a big problem for me. We've had a number of stocks that have gone to a peak C, a number of indexes and stocks that have gone to a peak C and then pulled back sharper than they should have without going to the D. They didn't even make what I call a peak C1, C2. And that's saying to me that here as well, there's a certain vulnerability. The MACD and Stochastic are very good in the DAX. Now, remember, this is not the this is not the German index. This is the Dow Jones German index. It's called Dow Jones Germany Stock Index. So uh, this is what they've made up, and the pattern's exactly the same as you see uh, in the real thing. It's just a different price, and it's, uh, it constitutes a different makeup. And you can see, there it is. There's that resistance, declining resistance level. Has to get above 392 to really break out. I'll be right back. That was a trap and final segment coming up. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls to sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of tfnn.com what are you waiting for all of the tfnn newsletters are informative up-to-date affordable and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets tfnn newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Don't forget, Steve comes up. Then you've got Dave White. You've got Tom O'Brien. And also check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Uh, we've had some real nice positions for quite a while now. So it uh, might be worthwhile. And as I say, uh, we did go short at the at just uh, right off the top of Friday's move. Uh, haven't increased to the position or anything, and we still have what did I say five five long positions, six long positions, uh, and nothing yet has changed there. So it's kind of a mixed bag. It's almost like we've got insurance here, but if the Dow in the next two days starts to close underneath uh, 20, uh, I'll give you it right now, underneath 26,750. 
then I think we're in for a deeper correction. Let's make it as simple as that. Okay. Now, that's the other thing that I, a uh, question I had. What about X? Uh, we were talking about it on Friday. X is like a nice move. It's up 15 cents at 10.96. So the question was, um, we had discussed it with Scott. Scott was in it because he called, considered it a position that uh, the United States Steel is one of the major companies and it should, you know, it should. So I don't know how we handle the trade, but I said to be a little careful about adding to the position and you needed to get to a certain level uh, to confirm that it would go higher. What it had a red candle on Friday, it was green on Thursday, red on Friday, and today it slumped and it was in the, as I recall, we were in the 11.09 area. On when we were talking about it on Thursday and Friday it closed down. It did go higher, but didn't make a new high. And then it slumped today. It went down to $10.17. And here it is back again, having made a new low. Uh, no, 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 no. 10 8, 16. Oh, it missed a new low by two cents. Good. I like that little double chance here. So, yeah, got to be very selective. He did it as a trade. He had a position. I don't know how it worked out. He knows how to handle that. He's done it before many times. So I just wanted to tell you, whoever asked in the den, I can't remember now um, what, what X is doing. And United States Steel moving up. It's up 16 at 10.97. Did make a low today of 10.17. All right. A couple of things as we're going out here. Just watch watch closely. This kind of bounce after the Chapman Wave uh, trend gauge reading. We expected that there'd be a weakness early on. Even though last night the Dow was up 130 points in the futures, it started off and went even 100 points down. And now it's trying to come back. Well, 80 points down. It's trying to come back. Watch this closely because Dow would have to get to 27,060 in the next two days to really say, hey, I've got even more on the upside. Watch it closely. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve.